Hello everybody, Bradley here, and welcome back into another Civilization 6 video where today we are talking all about Holy Sites. Holy Sites are a lot of fun, but you know what else is fun? Our live channel. If you guys take a look in the description, you're going to find a whole bunch of links, one to the Discord server, one to the Twitch stream, but what we're talking about today is our live channel. By popular, if you could drag properly, that'd be nice. By popular request, we have created a live channel where we put all of our Twitch stream VODs. A lot of people gave us the feedback that, hey, I'd love to watch the Twitch stream, but I can't always make it, or I would rather stay on YouTube. So boom, right here, you have all of the Twitch VODs that come out a day or two after the stream, so they're pretty current. And also, we do some fun things on Twitch that we don't normally do on YouTube. Like we did a 1 million gold challenge with Portugal. That is nine, that is like, 14 13 i'm not doing math again on this channel it's like 13 hours of content for you guys to watch if you'd like to watch it so 44 of you have already kind of found it and taken a look at it but hey we're going to talk about holy sites but definitely check out the live channel before you you kind of dive into this video the Holy Site District is one of my favorite districts in this game because there are so many obvious ways that they're useful, but there's also so many kind of cheeky and sneaky ways they're useful as well. And we're going to talk about some of those ways today, but just going in, just so you know where I'm at, you know, I'm a little lower on industrial zones than a lot of people. I'm higher on Holy Sites than maybe your average person for sure. Like we do with all districts, let's start at the very beginning here at Astrology where you get the Holy Site. The Holy Site's placement on the tech tree is really good and really bad at the same time, and it all depends on what difficulty you're playing on. Obviously, having a district early on here is super, super nice. You can get it right away. It's one of the first things you can go for. So if you want Holy Sites, if you have some good spaces to put Holy Sites, you have access to them pretty much right away at the start of the game, unlike something like theater squares, entertainment complexes, industrial zones, which come in a little bit later. Where is that? I'm skipping past it. Still, it's later, right? Medieval era is later in the game than the ancient era. So Holy Sites are available nice and early. The downside to this has everything to do with the difficulty you're playing on. So as you go up the difficulties all the way up to Deity, you kind of need to not rush Astrology right away, right? On Deity, you're normally going to need to do some combination of Animal Husbandry into Archery uh, to defend yourself against the Murder Goon Squads that will come and Murder Goon Squad you. And you also need Mining and Bronze working for the Chops. You might want Walls right away. If there's like a Flatland Desert Tile, you're going to need to go for Pyramids. So there's just a lot of things going on that you kind of need early in a lot of Deity games. It means you might not be able to rush astrology. And the problem with that is you need these holy sites to found your religion or to get your great profit in most games. So as you go up the difficulties, just be aware you will come into this conundrum where if you want a religion, you're going to have to rush for these holy sites because the AI will get the religions before you. But also that leaves you vulnerable or unable to chop out wonders or it leaves you just insufficient in other areas if you're rushing up here in a lot of games. That's not to say, though, that in all games, it's like that, right? In some games, you might rush up to Astrology, get your Holy Sites down, get your Religion, kind of come through everything else. No Murder Goon Squad came to take your Empire from you, and it works out great. But in most games, in my experience, if you rush uh, Holy Sites on Deity, you get the benefit of the Holy Site, the Faith, the Religion, all that stuff, but you do lose something along the way, and that could be a good Campus, or not being able to defend yourself as well, or a Toa, or Pyramids, or Chops, or something like that. The handy dandy Civlopedia here is going to tell us a lot about holy sites, mostly that they give great profit points per turn, they award you faith, and they have a bunch of adjacencies. What I like about holy sites early on is their biggest kind of adjacency here is going to be mountains, which are nice and easy to find, just like campuses. You can kind of just scout the map out and be like, ooh, there's some good holy site spots. There's a bunch of plus one faith from a whole bunch of things that we maybe talk about along the way, but mountains are the nice one early on. I also find myself uh, putting them next to natural wonder tiles. I usually find that if you're settling near a natural wonder, the tiles around it aren't always the most usable. And so putting a holy site there is a great way to utilize those tiles. And just because I want to do it like eight videos in a row, ley lines suck. Don't go hermetic order. I did get a comment from somebody saying they loved Hermetic Order. Look, this is a fun game. You're meant to have fun. If you have fun getting Hermetic Order, you go for it. I just do not, under any circumstances, recommend it. Now that we've kind of taken a look at those adjacency bonuses, early on, you're going to be making the most use out of either mountains, government plazas, or having two other adjacent districts. For instance, this holy site here gets one from the mountain and then one from being next to two other districts, and that's my way of making this holy site kind of okay early on in the game. Later on in the game, you might get those natural wonder ones in, you might be able to fandangle things a little bit to, to add those other adjacencies to it, but mostly mountains, um, districts nearby, or government plazas will be doing it for your, for your early holy sites at least. 
Now, these districts are actually kind of boring to talk about in a faith victory because a faith victory, you put down lots of them, you get lots of faith, you use that faith to buy religious units in them. Um, so it, 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 the strategy for a religious victory with holy sites is literally just get as many good holy sites as you can. There's a few reasons for this. You want that faith number. The other reason for this is you can only buy religious units in holy sites that have your religion, or you can only buy your own religious units, right? So let's say that my only holy Holy site is in the greatest civilization. I've only built one and I'm, I'm, I got a religion. I'm buying my religious units. If someone comes here and flips the religion of this city and I don't have another holy site anywhere, I won't be able to buy any more religious units until I build a holy site in a city that has my religion. For instance, partner party up here has a different religion, right? So if I try and buy a religious unit, if there was a holy site up here and I tried to buy a religious unit, it would be of this religion, pr Protestantism, and not of partner party. So keep in mind, not only is having lots of holy sites for a religious victory helpful because it'll get you a higher faith number in a lot of games, but also because it gives you more opportunities to fight back if the enemy religious units kind of start uh, bombarding your cities with their prayers and stuff. Also keep in mind where you are putting your holy site districts in your empire because you have to factor in the travel time it takes for units to get places, right? If you're trying to go for a religious victory, you have to buy your religious units in a holy site. If you only have one holy site and that is like way up in the middle of nowhere and you're trying to flip cities, then your units have to walk all the way from up in this tundra all the way down here and then across that is so far so what you ideally want to try and do is you want to have holy sites placed around your empire that way if i'm trying to come across here i have a holy site in salamanca or in please don't revolt i have like a holy site kind of near this area so i can send units across this way if i'm trying to flip cities over in this area ideally a holy site in one of these cities that are close by would be nice if you only have holy sites kind of in the middle of nowhere it takes a lot of time for your religious units to move your religious units typically have pretty low movement speed so low in fact that there's like a whole golden age thing that'll give your religious units more movement speed because it's that helpful so keep in mind not only for the other two reasons we talked about are holy sites helpful but having a few i like the north south east and west of your empire so when you need to flip cities with your religion you can buy it in the holy site closest that can save you a lot of time and a lot of turns in your game just to give you guys a little bit of a visual example, I bought a couple of missionaries just so we can kind of see how far away they are. If I were to buy this missionary here in Gyeongju and I want to move it to Karina, let's say I want to add, like, hey, perfect, they don't have our religion. Let's say I want to add our religion to Karina, or I see some apostles coming over in this direction, and I buy our units here. That's about, what is that, 15 tiles, would we say, between Karina and this missionary, right? So having a holy site nearby is quite nice. 15 tiles is not a whole lot. That's a couple of turns to get there but this missionary all the way over here is probably 35 tiles away 30 tiles away and if this was my only holy site i'm kind of resigning myself to that really long distance to travel whereas building multiple holy sites here has allowed me to respond in this direction really easily and if i need to respond over to the west easily i can so having your holy sites like i said northwest east south just visually i hope that gave a better example but it can be very helpful just in terms of getting your units on the board in the places you need them to be the other victory condition where you will be building holy sites quite often and building quite a few of them will be a culture victory. In a culture victory, ideally or most times at least, you will be buying quite a few naturalists here and quite a few rock bands up here. These units cost a lot of faith to begin with and they cost more faith every time you want to buy them. And the reason why you're gonna be building quite a few holy sites is you need enough faith economy to buy those units over and over and over again once you unlock them. But also if you build a few holy sites early on, you can start banking up that faith. It's additive, right? If you don't spend it, it just keeps adding on top, right? So if you build these holy sites nice and early and you're accumulating all of this faith, by the time you get to this part of the tech tree, you can already buy a couple rock bands. Where am I even looking? Good Lord. You can already buy a couple of rock bands. You can already buy a couple of naturalists. So not only do you need these holy sites once you unlock these units, you're gonna want them a little bit beforehand. So by the time these units are unlocked, you are able to um, actually have the faith in your store. Where do you even store faith in your mind? Um, in your brain storage of faith, you'll have it all built up there to get these units right away. So moral of the story is build holy sites in a culture game and build them rather early so you have an, enough faith to keep buying these units, but also have enough faith in the brain storage so when you unlock these units, you can buy lots of them. 
We're not going to talk about them in detail today, but just keep in mind that there are a few wonders in the game that require holy sites. Feel free to go and look at a wonder list somewhere to find out what they all are. The Mabodi Temple is a good one here. Must be built on woods adjacent to a holy site district with a temple. So you know you might want to take, if you know you want the Mabodi Temple, you might want to take that into account when placing your holy site. Like, hey, I got to put my holy site near some woods so I can build this temple. And so just keep in mind, there are some wonders in the game that do require holy sites and, and other requirements like woods for the Mabodi temple so as you're placing your holy sites around keep that in mind now you're not playing a faith game you're not playing a culture game why would you build holy sites what do i need faith for in other games that i should still build a couple of holy sites well there's actually so many reasons i'm convinced there are so many reasons that you should build holy sites anyway that i would i want to challenge you guys i'm only going to say a few of the ones that are coming off the top of my head right now but put in the comments below just a, a reason you would build holy sites in a game that isn't a faith or culture victory the first reason is going to be for Grand Master's Chapel. In the government plaza kind of building chain here, you have the Grand Master's Chapel and you unlock this fairly early on. Grants the ability to buy land units with faith. Pillaging improvements in districts provides bonus faith. In domination games, I'm typically going for Grand Master's Chapel. It's a really nice way to be able to buy military units with faith. So even in a game that has nothing to do at all with faith it's very very helpful if you have some holy sites kind of ready to go to be able to buy your land units with faith instead of with gold or if you're in a pinch like someone's attacking you you can just buy them instead of having to wait a turn timer like this nuclear weapon i guess you can't buy the nuclear weapon that's a bad example what i'm trying to say though is this thing takes turns three of them in fact and instead of, you can't just buy it like wouldn't it be neat if you could just go and click purchase with faith boom i have the grand holy I actually have the Grandmaster's Chapel. Ladies and gentlemen, watch this in action. I can just buy a helicopter. Boom. I got the faith. I got the Grandmaster's Chapel. You can just buy your units like that. Very handy dandy. That worked out shockingly well, completely by accident. The next will be Heroes and Legends mode. In Heroes and Legends mode, your heroes cost a load of faith to get back if you do not have holy sites on the map you are probably not getting your heroes back in a very timely manner hippolyta costs 1120 you know why i can buy hippolyta back right now because i built some holy sites and i have some faith and everything is amazing the next reason you might want to build holy sites in a game where you're not going for a religion at all or it's not a culture victory is that you still might want some of the religious buildings that you can get for instance in this game we have a religion so we chose a mosque as our building but in some games if you have holy sites in your cities and someone else takes over your city with their religion you can buy their religious building and maybe that's a mosque maybe that's a what there are a few different religious buildings that give you different yields but maybe in some cities you're going to want access to that and holy sites are necessary to kind of purchase or build those buildings. So that's just another kind of niche reason you might want a couple holy sites lying around the map because you can access some religious buildings that you won't be able to um, otherwise. I probably should have switched the order around on this one, but another reason they're in the same freak, I skipped right past them, is great people. You're going to want to buy great people with faith every once in a while, whether it's securing a really good great merchant for that corporation you got to build or the great scientist you want or the great engineer that's going to grab you that wonder. Sometimes you need that little bit of extra boost at the end. You've earned enough points to get really close like this one here. Let's say I really want this great admiral. This battleship sounds cool. I'm getting really close. Someone's really close behind me. Boom. I can buy that with faith and so if you're not spending your faith on rock bands or on naturalists you might have quite a bit built up and that can help secure some just just that little extra great person you might need to win the game there are a few that are so much better than the other ones that are so specific to your victory condition that every once in a while can be very very helpful also a clutch golden age might be another reason as well right buying a great person with faith gives you one error score I believe it gives you one error score. I should have tested that. How much error score does it give you? 396. Let's purchase this one. That gave me four error score. Hell yeah. So it gives you lots of error score. That's another four error score. So I think buying them with faith gives you three. And I have the Taj Mahal. Yeah. What I'm trying to say, though, is regardless of whether it's 1 or 3 or 4 or 12, um, getting your Golden Age can be achieved in some eras by purchasing great people with faith.
The last kind of big reason I want to talk to you guys about for getting holy sites in a game where you might not need it actually happens quite early on in a game where you don't need it. I mean, not a religious victory or a cultural victory. It happens quite early on the first two eras in the game, the first three, actually. You can grab up until the Renaissance era, you can grab a golden age bonus called Monumentality. Monumentality allows you to buy settlers, builders and traders with faith can't show that off at the moment because this game is well past monumentality the point is though if you have some early holy sites that are helpful and you know you're going into monumentality the ability to just buy settlers and builders instead of having to build them is so it's called monumentality because it's monumental how helpful that is in a game so watch out in the kind of classical through renaissance era for these monumentality golden ages and if you think you can get a monumentality golden age and you have a good holy site district to put down um then i would definitely definitely look to do that all right before we finish up here there's just a few things i would like to chat about first is the inevitable question um is is holy sites or our holy is holy sites good god are holy sites the best way to get faith in a game the answer is yes but keep in mind there are other ways to get faith in your games of civ i'm not going to be able to mention nearly all of them right now but there are loads of them for instance like these types of tiles come to mind preserves come to mind nazca lines come to mind so there are ways to get faith without building holy sites and if you can get that faith without building holy sites earth goddess comes to mind as well then feel free to do that we're just talking about the district in this video video but just know that i am aware that in a game where you have monumentality you might have enough faith from the other things that you don't need holy sites that's totally fine this isn't a video about that though just thought i'd mention that holy sites are the best way to get faith in your games but but by not all by all means not by not all means by all means not the only way the other thing to keep in mind with holy sites is I, I would still stick with the plus three rule as like a good holy site but in these games i'm not actually too worried about exactly how good the holy sites are i'm per i'm perfectly fine with this plus two holy site the reason for that is that once all the religions are gone once all the great profit points are gone the great profit points you earn then become faith per turn right so if i have a, a holy site here let's go and take a look at just your standard holy site right it gives you plus one great profit point per turn but once all the great profits are gone it just gives you faith per turn instead so it kind of has a built-in little adjacency there so i'm a little less worried about getting the perfect holy site instead of the perfect campus because it has it has a kind of built-in way to give you a little more faith than it says it does just kind of like i said built into it so that's just a little quirk that's nice if you see me putting down like plus two or plus one holy sites instead of plus threes it's because i'd rather save these mountain tiles for the campuses and no that this holy site is going to be a little bit better because of all the extra great profit points that i'm getting that are just turning into faith and that'll do it for holy sites not a whole lot to discuss a very simple district compared to some of them um the, the few things you should consider are religious victory and cultural victory you should be building lots of these in most games we'll go with 10 to 12 cities your average game i say i'm probably building four to six holy sites kind of spread throughout the game not all super early but probably by the mid game they're all down um your religious units get more expensive as they go along so having quite a few holy sites is good to, for maintaining the amount of faith you need to buy those units but also like i said northwest east south holy sites are super nice just for positioning to move your units around cultural victories like we mentioned like like the religious victories the units that you need the naturalists and the rock bands get more expensive the more you buy them thus having more holy sites and giving you more faith is helpful if you are not in a cultural or religious victory i would say like two to four is my norm i think i built two in this game built two or three took over two or three two to four is my norm there are very few games where i don't build holy sites at all though i always want to be prepared for a monumentality golden age i always want to be able to buy my heroes back um so holy sites are definitely one of those districts you want to be throwing down in all your games i typically throw it down if i'm not using it for a religious or cultural victory i typically throw it down in like a somewhat decent spot to give adjacency to other districts or i'll throw it next to a commercial hub and a theater square to give those an extra plus one as well once you make your little district triangle so i would say two to four right probably hanging closer to two in most games um, but then if you're in a religious or cultural game that's like four to six probably leaning closer to to that five to six range but have fun with them holy sites are one of those districts they're the district that keeps on giving you don't know you need them until you don't have them or you don't know you miss them it's one of those things where you don't realize what you have until it's gone so i encourage you guys to put in the comments all the reasons to build holy sites anyone you could think of i want this to be a comprehensive list 
in the comments below of all the reasons you guys build holy sites in your games or all the reasons you don't. Like I mentioned, there are other ways to get faith. Um, holy sites are the most reliable, but there are other ways to do it if you, if you don't want to or don't need to build holy sites. Anyways, though, I think that's going to do it for us today. Uh, just thank you so much for all the support recently on Twitch, on Discord, on these YouTube videos. Feel free to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Like I said, go down into the comments. Otherwise, just thank you so much for watching, and we will see you in the next one.